Hello, I'm Alexa. If you don't know me, I make videos about product design, careers in tech, and life. If you can't tell by the title of this video, well, I live in San Francisco and I'm at home. Are you new here? I've made a few videos like this in the past, but considering the state of the world right now, I thought it could be a good time to make another one. This time I wanted to share what my life has been like working from home and what I've been doing to build new work from home habits. Before we jump into things, I wanted to mention that working from home is not completely new to me. I've been lucky enough to be able to work from home one day out of the week for the past three years before everything got turned upside down. So I hope me sharing my new work from home day is helpful for you. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them for me in the comments. And with that, Here's my day. With my new schedule, I'm waking up between 8 to 8.30 a.m., which is a bit later than what I was waking up before. I no longer need to calculate in time to commute to the office, so I've given myself a little extra time in the morning for sleep. The very first thing I do when I get up in the morning is make my bed. I think it's one of the most important things you can do for yourself every morning. And that's because it sets the tone for the day. As a designer, I love solving problems. Well, how am I supposed to help solve any problems and make sense out of anything if my own spaces are out of order and a mess? I've learned the importance of creating order in my life first before trying to create change in the outside world. Your bed is a great place to start considering it's something you have control over. I started making my bed every single morning for a year now and I'm not trying to be dramatic when I say this, but by principle, it's been life-changing. After that, I do normal getting ready types of things like I brush my teeth and I wash my face. I have a skincare routine that I still do every morning and I even still put on face sunscreen. Makeup, I skip now that I'm working from home, but I put it on from time to time for special occasions. Next, I make myself some tea, which is usually something I'd wait to do until I've gotten into the office. So good thing I've got a massive tea collection. Hands down, my favorite tea is matcha green tea and especially matcha lattes. But if you follow me on Instagram and especially Instagram stories, you already knew that. The last part of my morning routine is to journal and I'm actually only journaling on Monday mornings right now. I set aside this extra time for myself in the morning to sit down and just write. Consistently writing has been super rewarding and it's allowed me to make better sense of what's going on for me in my life. I highly recommend it if it's something you're interested in exploring. Okay, so here we are at my new work from home setup. I have to admit, this took me over a month to get right and that's because sometimes the best things in life just take time. I moved this desk from my living room into my bedroom and wow, it almost immediately made me so much happier. For context, I live with roommates, and so the living room is a shared space which can be distracting at times. In any given day, I have a variety of work to be done that follows the three C's. Don't know what the three C's are? That's okay, I just made it up. They stand for communication, collaboration, and creation. Say that three times fast. <laughs> to be honest, not a lot of what I've been doing day to day has changed. I work at a tech company and in general, it's been fairly straightforward to transfer our processes to a virtual format. I'm incredibly grateful to be able to do my work from home. It is a gift. I usually start my morning with a ton of communication related tasks. And for me, that means going through and clearing out my inbox, as well as reviewing messages that come through to me on our internal communication software tool called Slack. My process for this is to respond to any messages that I can take immediate action on and which is usually tied to progress being made on one of my design projects. I also use this time to write down my tasks for the day. I like to think through what exactly it is I should be working on so by the end of the day, I can tell how much I've accomplished. I use post notes because, well, they're awesome, but also because they are the perfect size for one idea and they are designed to be easily thrown away after you're done with it. Just like making my bed, I like to keep my desk tidy and organized. It helps me stay clear-minded, productive, and creative. My day is also full of meetings, which I've categorized as collaboration, and surprise, surprise, now all of my meetings are done virtually. I actually already used to have a ton of meetings over video conference calling because my team at Zendesk is super distributed. Just on the creative team, we have designers based out of 10 different office locations, which span throughout North America, Europe, and the Asia Pacific region. Since our team was already so global, I think it's helped us more smoothly transition into this fully virtual world, as we already had best practices and etiquette for video conference calling. For example, we're mindful when scheduling calls, especially across different time zones. We typically opt into having our videos turned on during meetings to better humanize how we collaborate and we usually keep meetings 25 minutes or 50 minutes to give people time to transition between other meetings. The most consistent meeting that I have in a given week are project check-ins, which help to make sure everyone on a given team is still on track with their work. It also gives everyone an opportunity to ask for support if they need it. Since I now work in design operations, I participate in these check-in meetings not only for my core team, but also for product design and the brand team. It's pretty typical for product design organizations to call these check-ins stand-up, because usually people stand up 
in this meeting. Most product designers also have a stand-up meeting with their core product and engineering partners as well. From time to time, I'll participate in kickoff meetings for new design projects, and I also have a weekly one-on-one -on -one with my manager. I'm super grateful for this meeting and to have her support weekly if I need anything. Now that my role is more external facing, I also have a number of meetings with outside design organizations or people who we are partnering with in the design community programs that I oversee. Before this pandemic, that meant I would be out and about meeting with people at different locations to collaborate, but of course this has changed for the time being. If you're curious and want me to try and break down in more detail what some of these meetings are and why we have them, I'd love to hear what your questions are in the description below. It's tough trying to share about what's happening day to day because of course, a lot of the specifics are private information to the company. Lastly, my day is filled with big openings of time that I use to create. Yes, this is the design work time. Even though I'm now in design community, I'm still doing a ton of design work and especially work in designing experiences. Something I'd recommend, especially if you're first starting out, is to be really intentional with your calendar and block off large chunks of time so people know not to schedule meetings during your work time. This is especially important for designers or people who have project-based work. You really do need that deep focus time to create the design deliverables. So there you have it, the three C's. Throughout the day, I move around and about my house just like I would if I was at the office. I will say I have been doing a ton more cooking now that I am working from home. This also means I'm doing a ton more dishes, but I've decided it's totally worth it. If you've gotten anything from this video, I hope it is this. Be intentional with how you design your routine. Make sure it's true to you, sets you up for success, and enables you to be creative. If you need extra time in the morning to clear your mind before jumping into work, then try waking up a little bit earlier or starting your day a little bit later. If you found yourself drowning in meetings, then do an audit of them and try to move them around so you can block off your time to create. And okay, if your desk is messy, then just make sure you're intentional about it being the way that it is. Make these intentional decisions and I know you will figure out the best work from home routine for yourself. If you've made it this far, that's amazing. Remember, my name is Alexa and on this channel, I make videos about product design, careers in tech and life. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber yet, I would love for you to be one. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and stay up to date with all the things that happen in between me making these videos. So much love to you all. I hope to see you next time. Bye.